direction. I mean, why if if you if human beings lost the appreciation oh, for, the, the, for the beauty, soul, and, I mean the divinity of the grace, what will happen? I mean, I will be like. But certain people are, are telling us that it's good, it's good to lose the appreciation for the beauty because beauty is discrimination. Hmm. So I am very like, you know, with that, all these discourses of the neoliberalism, you know, that hmm. everything is allowed, we are losing something. We are losing something there. And I don't want to be in the extreme of the, I don't want to go to the extremes, you know, in my point of view, but, but in this body, we always live in these polarities. The soul, I mean, it's impossible not to have a polarity. Mm -hmm. And it's good to observe it all the time and to be aware, to have this exercise, to observe the polarity and not to identify and to be extreme about it. But it's also good to, to know that if we allow everything, what will happen? Where, where is going to be the beauty and the aesthetics in human beings? Mm -hmm. These are big questions that, <laughs> yes. that uh, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that we're discussing because um, this is on my mind every day, actually. Uh, and and I think it, let's see if we can back up and get, add some context. Uh, so I can't imagine human beings without a sense of beauty. I can't imagine human beings without a sense of appreciation, a sense of gratitude, a sense of love for the world for nature for creation for each other and for the whole cosmos like i think that that is essential to the identity of what it means to be human is to have that kind of relationship with the whole um that said uh we each come from different cultures and different perspectives and what that is and how that what appeals to us is is always going to be different even though at the heart of it, it's the same. Now, I think we also have a situation where because we've evolved in nature and out of nature, through nature, uh, and nature is brutal in many ways and challenging, difficult, and uh, dark uh, and violent, uh, we also have a lot of fear. And that's part of our inheritance as animals. Mm -hmm. That we're, we, we're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of each other. We're afraid of what's going to happen in the future. We have this idea of the past and the present and the future. And, and that, that drives us to um, focus our, our minds in certain ways. Like, if we were in ancient times, we would be building a wall around our little village. Uh, to protect us from the things that we were afraid of. Or if we were becoming hungry and becoming anxious and the weather was bad and the, game, you know, the animals that we were hunting were, 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 were moving away, we might get uh, the idea that we can attack another group and take their things. And then that's how we're going to survive. In the present day, we're in the same situation, but it's a lot more complicated. And most of us are being driven by fear. And when you hear people when say, well, we don't need the arts, we don't need beauty, we don't, uh, you know, it's too soft, it, it doesn't, what does it do for anybody? Like, it, how does it, how does it help? I think it's usually coming from that place of fear because we have a sense that we need to secure something. We need to reclaim something. And so, Maybe that means we have to go to war. Maybe that means we have to start a company and maybe it means we have to destroy a forest because we need all the lumber to feed, you know, this, this, uh, this mania that kind of gets, builds up when, um, 
you know, and, and that has built up historically, like into the situation that we're in now, where many, many people feel that we're in a crisis. And where if we turn on our computers and we look at the news or anywhere we see, we see violence, we see, we see displacement, we see suffering, we see, you know, climate disasters. I mean, it's a, it's very disturbing time. You know, it's like a nightmare that we're in the middle of. Uh, and, uh, and the, the nightmare is history. The nightmare is the human, you know, it's, it's the human experience now on, on the planet. And, and so, uh, you know, so that's why we have to, people want to focus on the economy or people want to focus on, on business. People want to focus on like, how are we going to secure the resources that we need? Uh, and how are we going to defeat the enemy? And uh, maybe it's Russia, maybe it's the gang, the drug gangs. It could be any, we're all, we all, it has to be somebody. <laughs> that's the <laughs> point, you know? <laughs> and uh, what I think, why I think one reason that art is so much, so essential now is because it can, it can kind of coax us out of that. <laughs> like it can give us a, like help us to see things differently, to take a different point of view, to even sometimes relax because art can be playful. It can be ecstatic. It could, it could take our mind off of our worries and our anxieties and our problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if it does that in a way that's conscious and not just kind of escape, you know, if yeah. it does it in a way that's conscious, then it's also leading us out of the darkness. It's leading us out of the fear. And it's showing us that actually we have the capacity to, to work with the situation, to change something, to give it a different meaning, to give it a different form. Mm -hmm. So like in my work, I don't see my artistry only in terms of like a, a, a particular medium, like poetry or music or like, it's not just that. That's one ex aspect of it. But I'm thinking about the world. <laughs> like, I'm like, how are we going to evolve the situation that we're all in to, um, to bring back a balance, to bring us back into balance with the, the universe, with the cosmos. Because right now we're very self-involved and self-focused, and we're we're I, we're kind of um, uh, we're contracted, like in in a fear-based society, fear-based civilization. I think Sri Aurobindo was right. He was seeing the same thing and was writing about this. And part of what he did in his poetry too, and in his philosophy and all his teaching, is create a different vision, show that this is part of an evolution. We move through this, and we can grow into a higher possibility that's more than just our matter, more than just our emotional body, more than just our minds, is also a spiritual being. And, and that's what I feel like, the, you know, the arts really, they don't, not all of them do it, but I think that it's a profound purpose of art to lead us into that, to, into that spiritual being. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> who's that? Who's who's the friend? Hi. <laughs>